So I'm going to start with a number in base 10, and I want to turn it into a base 5 number. And there's a few different ways to get this done. So if there is no base written, we assume it's base 10. Sometimes I'll explicitly write it in there. But if you just see a number with no subscript written, assume it's base 10. So what does 533, looks, 533 things look like as a numeral if I group by 5 instead? So one way to do that is just think about the place values of base 5. And what we want to do is we want to make as many as we need to build a number that big. So I'm going to start over here on the, the right. We always start off with our ones. The next place over will be whatever base we're talking about. So that would be base five. And remember, in base five, we're grouping by five. So the next one has to be five groups of five. So that'll be 25. Keep going. What I want to do is I want to find a, a place value that's bigger than the number I have here. Five groups of 25. Five times 25 is 125. Not big enough yet. What are five 125s look like? If you check on your calculator, five times 125 is 625. Oh, I finally exceeded the number I have. So I always go one step further because I can see, okay, that's too big. I need that place value to make this number right here. So now it's like kind of like counting back change. I owe somebody 533 and I have bills worth 125, 25, five, and one. I'm gonna give them as many of this big bill as I can. So how many groups of 125 are in 533? Well, I'm gonna check that on a calculator. There's three or four. So I wanna take 533 and say, how many 125s are in there? Okay, so there's four of them. So I just discovered that I need four 125s to make this number, but that's, that's not quite enough, right? So if I just double check off to the side here, 125, continue the calculation on my own, goes into 533, I just calculated it goes in four times. Four times that, well, four times 100 is 400. Four times 25 is another 100, so that's 500. So that leaves 33. So these four 125s account for 500 worth of this stuff, and I got 33 left over. So now I have to work with 33. How many groups of 25 go into 33? Well, I can see pretty clearly there's one. Subtract, I get eight. So I found there is one group of 25 in that leftover stuff. So now I have eight to work with. Next place is five. How many groups of five are in eight? Well, there's one. One times five is five, subtract and I get three. So I found there is one group of five in there and then I have three left over. So five, three, three base 10 is four, one, one, three base five is what we just discovered. And we just do that kind of like thinking about counting back change. You start with the biggest place value and work your way down. So 625 was too big for this number. So I started with 125. So let's try that for a different number. Oh. How would I check? How would I know that that's correct? I could have easily messed that up. Well, I just work it backwards to check. So if I wanted to check this, I just have to think about what this number means. What does 4113 base 5 mean? Well, because I know the place values, I know that means there's four 125s, and there's one 25, and there's one 5 and there are three ones. Four times 125, we could double check on a calculator, it's 500, plus 125, plus one five, plus three. See, five and five is 10, plus three is 13, carry the one, two and one is three, and five. And yeah, that checks.
it works out to be the right number. So we saw earlier converting from base five to base 10, you just have to identify the place values in expanded form, do the arithmetic. Multiplying and adding is a little bit easier than dividing and subtracting, which is the reverse process. Now there is a cute alternative way to get from here to here. And it revolves around the idea that to, to do base five, you just have to group by five. Now grouping by five, that's division. So I did do division this way, starting with the biggest place value, but it turns out you can start with the smallest one and I'll show you how. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write, I'm gonna leave some space above, I'm gonna start down lower, and I'm gonna take five into 533. And sometimes this involves a calculator for help because I don't wanna do long division here. So I don't wanna show all that extra stuff. And I'll do this two different ways. I'm gonna show what I call short division first. Five goes into five one time, then I move over to the next place value. Five goes into three, zero times with three left over. Five goes into 33, six times with a remainder of three right there. So I'll do that a couple more times, but to kind of see that on a calculator. I took the 533 and I divided by five. And I need to know two things here. I need to know what is the whole number and then what's the remainder. Now, the calculator is not gonna show me the remainder, they're gonna show me the decimal, that's different. So if I look back at my work here, I found that five went into 533, 106 times, right? That's the whole number the calculator said, but my remainder was three. Well, three what? Three out of five. And if you think about three out of five as a decimal, that's where the 0.6 comes in at the end here. Now, if we weren't sure how to get the remainder out of the calculator, we just do this. So once I make that calculation there, what I do is I, all I care about is the decimal part, okay? So I could just type 0.6, that was the decimal part. And I got the 0.6 by dividing by five. So to undo that, I just take that decimal part and multiply by five. And it says, oh, the remainder was three. So we divide to get the whole number part. We take the decimal times our divisor to figure out what the remainder was. All right, now what I'm gonna do next is a little weird. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue dividing, but I'm gonna go upward now. So what I wanna do next is I wanna take five into the 106 and I'll explain why after I do it. So I wanna know how many times five goes into 106. Well, I know five goes into 10 twice with no remainder and then five goes into six once with one left over. So my claim is five goes into 106, 21 times remainder one. You can double check that on the calculator. So I wanted to know how many times five went into 106. So what's 106 divided by five? So there's the 21 and then I have that point two. So I don't wanna know what the point two means. If I'm not sure, I just take the point two and multiply it by five. Oops, five. There we go. And it says my remainder would be one. So five goes into 106, 21 whole times. And then I can turn the decimal into a remainder by multiplying the decimal by the divisor. All right, same process I did above. Okay, so why did I do that double division there? So what I found is 533 is made up of 106 groups of five. So what I did in this stage in red here is I took 533 and I regrouped it into a bunch of nickels. How many nickels? 106 nickels and three pennies left over. Then I took those nickels and I grouped them by five. So now I'm looking for quarters. I found 21 quarters in the 106 nickels with one nickel left over. Now watch what happens as I build this up. I'm gonna keep dividing by five. I'm just gonna switch colors here. How many times does five go into 21? Well, five goes into 24 times remainder one. 
keep going, how many times does five go into four? Well, zero times and the remainder is four. And then what I'd like you to do is consider what I have written right here heading down. Four, one, one, three. That is the number above there. And the key is grouping by five is division. And if we continually group, regroup by five, that's repeated division. Takes a little getting used to. If that method, if you don't like it, there's always the method where we name the place values and start giving out the biggest bills first. So we'll do each of those again. <clears throat> 